The Black Bay 50 AGMT must be the best tutor made so far. Curiously, I'm in love with it, and that shouldn't happen. But this model really demands respect. The Brand came up with a series of fixes and tweaks, which made it very actual and very attractive. And because professionally, as a product designer, I see things which you might not see, I decided to go in depth and explain why these changes made the 58 the perfect replacement for a GMT Master 2. The 2018 Tudor Black Bay GMT was my second luxury watch and helped me to understand the watch world differently. If initially the Seamaster 300M was for me the pinnacle of quality, refinement and craftsmanship, the GMT as a vintage inspired piece provided a different perspective of an under the radar qualitative watch. And you might say, Andre, this is an entry level luxury watch, but for a guy who just started this passion seriously, to spend over 2000 euros on a watch, that might be overwhelming. So it's a matter of individual perception, for some spending so much money might mean a lot. But better, let's get into facts. First and foremost, the Black Bay line is on a severe redesign process. That's actually good news. The first Black Bays were launched in 2012. You might remember the ETA smiley face dial with a red gasket next to the crown. Very nice, relevant for that period, but obsolete for the new trends. Where a lot of brands are bringing back vintage models to an incredible accuracy, so they had to resize and redesign slowly each model. That's a fact. The deal breaker for me was the heavy oversized filling on the wrist, which wears larger than a normal 41mm diver. The simplified oyster case without too many accents and angles, the strange non-vintage crown, and ultimately the severe gap between the case and the strap, which always felt sloppy to me. But let's not get dramatic. They changed them. So the first chapter is about the DNA of this GMT. Obviously, when they started to recreate this GMT, they had a goal, an inspiration point to start with. It's not the first time when Tudor seeks for inspiration looking at the Rolex's past, but this time they did it differently. By putting strategical accents and making good use of the modern technology to offer an atmosphere around the swatch. A chromatic experience which works together, that was the goal to offer for the nostalgic audiences an already aged Black Bay GMT which seeks to emulate the beautiful accents of the 1955 GMT Master 2 which were obtained through the passing of time, but to offer the latest technology inside of this 2024 GMT. And that's the wow factor of it. And that leads to the point number two, the sizing of the watch. And I have to be honest with you, being disappointed by the watches and wanderers releases this year, I wasn't even interested to know more about this GMT, thinking that it's the same old platform offered on a different color, which we all know it was heavy, tall and big. But this Coke version is totally different, I am surprised, I have to admit it. It's basically a Black Bay 58 with a GMT function, or maybe a downscale version of the original GMT. Which means the case has a smaller diameter of 39mm, it is thinner let's say for a GMT measuring 12.8mm in height with a thick case profile, 20mm between the lugs and the most important has shorter lugs, which is relevant because the distance from the case and the strap was out of this world. Way too big for the old 41mm Tudors. But overall due to the size this 58 wears extremely compact on the wrist like a vintage GMT Master. And although has a thick case profile this watch is well balanced as ratio between the width and the height and the lug with it super helpful at 20mm because the watch can become more versatile with the addition of rubbers or leather straps. The sizing being a crucial adjustment in my opinion because it makes it more adaptable and easy to wear in multiple circumstances especially as a traveler's watch. It's a tank. And now, the attention to details, it's better than ever with this GMT58. Because in regard to the chromatic tone of the dial, it's not necessarily above the golden gilt dial. The markers are as well toned on a patina color, even the date it's creamy. So on this watch there is nothing white, black or on a strong pigment, everything is made to look balanced together, like a painting. And more than that, although the initial GMTs had clear accented colors for the GMT hand, like the strong red pigment, in the case of the 58, the GMT hand is covered on a gold accent which 
looks better balanced. Overall, the dial composition is similar to the old Black Bay GMT with a simplified bottom label, the same matted dark grey dial, the same shorter triangle at 12 o'clock, but with a new seconds hand which was replaced from a square to a rounded pip. Pretty cool because it feels vintage and better balanced. The bezel of this 58 GMT aims to recreate the atmosphere of the first GMT Master 2 from 1955. It's true that the model had a Pepsi bezel so the superior part was blue. However, this was the aim of Tudor to emulate the materiality and the accents obtained through aging and usage. For example, the GMT Master 2 had a matted red-blue aluminium bezel with an acrylic coating above. Tudor in this instance to recreate this effect they applied more varnish on the bezel making it way more lacquered and reflective compared to my Black Bay 54 which feels more matted. And by doing so alongside the burgundy color the watch offers a patina smoked atmosphere which you can find on the renaissance paintings so the colors aren't unnatural they can be borrowed from the nature that's the cool part about this gmt however as downsides this lacquered appearance can make the watch to look a bit more reflective than usual so as evolution from the 41mm GMT, the blue tail part is now deep black and the red strong tone of the previous model now it's on a warm burgundy tone which works brilliantly with the gold accents, connecting very well the muted tone of the golden numerals from the bezel which works very well with the entire color scheme. But as bezel action, I can't say they improved something compared to the previous generation. Now, one of the relevant attributes which pretty much changes the DNA of the new Black Bay line must be the crown. I complained multiple times about the unnatural crown of the Black Bay which feels more like a plastic ball cap. Without depth, without a historic reference, ruining ultimately the proposed DNA of a vintage watch. But it's all good they gave up on it, offering instead a new generation for the crown which truly looks like a vintage Tudor or a vintage sub, as it should be. These new crowns are smaller, the grip area is narrower with a normal embossed volume which hosts the rose signature which is embossed as well. So this change kind of moved away the focus from the crown and the case as a whole, offering more focus only on the case, completing better the vibe of a vintage case. At least the 54 looks amazing in this combo. And getting into movement details, obviously this new 58 GMT has a new movement. The new MT5450U was recreated to be slimmer in order to make a thinner watch profile, which was imperative. The power reserve remaining at around 65 hours, but the most impressive thing is the following. If the older black base hosted a movement with cost accuracy, precisely the guaranteed tolerance between minus 6 and plus 6 seconds per day, the new Black Bay 58 GMT is Meta's cost certified by the Swiss Federal Institute of Metrology. This is basically a new level of competence which a movement should meet like the magnetic resistance up to 15,000 gauss, concluding that their new movements are now tested by Meta's before they are cased into Tudor's creations. I guess you've heard that before, yes Omega does that for more than 6 years with their creations, but we have to sell it to this initiative although the prices of the new black base increased considerably. Last but not least, the 7th improvement point of this 58 GMT must be the clasp. If the watch is already well balanced to sit well on the wrist, their heritage oyster riveted bracelets were already nicely tapered and comfortable, the only thing to adjust was the clasp, which was obviously upgraded and offered for this 58 GMT. The Tiffet clasp is actually a standard for Tudor already, the newer collections have these adjustable on the fly clasps even on the Tudor Ranger. In my opinion this clasp is not too large, not too small, but is brilliant because it allows you to adjust the watch on the wrist by pulling or pushing the links under the clasp. So I can go full gas for one hour and present you all these light changes for the 58 GMT, but the main conclusion is the following. This is the ideal go anywhere do anything traveler's watch because it's a tank, it's anti-magnetic, it's accurate, it's robust offering 200 meters war resistance, it's charming and it works with all the clothes you have in your wardrobe. Just look at me and how I managed to pull it off with a summer outfit. That is it my friends, hope you enjoyed it and I'm really curious to know what do you think about this new Tudor Black Bay 58 GMT. Please let me know in the comments below. And as usual, if you're new around, please consider subscribing for future episodes. Thank you very much, thanks for watching, and until next time, be brave and
Stay safe.